The only way I could answer it is by trying it out and finding the answer out for myself. And I really want you to develop that fearlessness. It's like, oh, what does this do? Just try it out and see what happens. Maybe it'll break, but it's probably not gonna catch on fire, okay? It'll probably just say, hey, that's not right. You're probably feeling a little bit overwhelmed. Don't worry about it. We're gonna iterate. We're gonna go again and again over this stuff. This is really foundational, okay? And not every single piece in here is gonna be explained. There's stuff here which will be mysterious to you. Don't worry, the mystery will slowly disappear. It won't completely disappear. I'm a professor, I've been teaching this class for 10 years, there's still mystery in here, okay? First five lectures were fantastic. It was really great to get back into the room. The technology for delivering hybrid lecture is not much different from doing a remote lecture, but you get to have the people in front of you. And for me, that was such, it gives me such a, a large psychological lift to see the faces in front of me. Do you go to your own expense to buy all this equipment? No, I don't. I spend time on it, like this deck that I have here, which you see in the, in the photograph you took previously and, and in the video footage you took previously, you'll see all that gear. And, and I went to the trouble of sourcing it all and going to Bunnings and, and I built this little strange rig which holds my laptop up on the lights up. Another nice little contraption I have here, which I'll just show you, is uh, this stream deck. And you can see this stream deck, it's a little device here, which it just allows me to punch a button here and, uh, and it will snap to a different scene. So I can snap oh, it to that, to that scene or that scene. And, uh, and uh, you know, and I can start and stop the recording or whether I'm live streaming. When the class is about to start, I'll have a slide up like that, which just uh, captures the whole of the desktop. In the lecture theater, I use the camera quite a lot because it's actually really nice um, in Manning Clark because it turns out that the view in the background neatly captures the entire projected screen. My camera captures almost exactly one PowerPoint slide's worth of information. And in Java, it's object at the top, okay? And what this thing here says is that everything in the array, when you declare the array, everything you shove in it has to be of the type that you declare or one of its subclasses. This mic system I'm using, I'm using this nice little lav mic. Um, that, that, that's purchased by the school. In fact, last year when we went to the lockdown, the computer science school bought a dozen or so of these. So most computer science academics or any computer science academic who wants one of these can, can grab one of these so they can get a, a reasonable quality sound. So for any sort of reasonable request like that, like for a $200 webcam or for a $200 stream deck or these little um, road uh, mics, uh, that was all funded by the school. The other thing I think that's really interesting is this thing that, that you filmed earlier with Leo capturing text questions and then vocalizing them, interjecting from the front row. Hi, Steve. Um, I've, got, I've got a question from Adam. Um, he asked, do all Java programs need to be main methods inside classes? Right, great question. Um, the question is, do all Java programs need to have a main method inside the class? And the answer is, if it's a program, it does. Because the way we're doing this a very large class, we can't have everyone there with video and audio, so we're using the chat. And so he turns that chat into, he synthesizes a question and, and raises it out loud. And he's doing this a lot. Um, and I think that also really helps because then I reflect that back and say, oh, you know, Fred asked this question from online. It's a great question and so forth. Let's go and solve Fred's question. And I think that helps uh, the people who are watching, whether whether they're Fred or someone else, because they get the sense that the people who are online are part of the whole deal. And we've continued that. And uh, the way we're doing that is that, um, because Leo can't obviously be um, in this, in my house, um, uh, but, but, but what he does, uh, we, we spent a few minutes uh, brainstorming how best to do it. And at one point we thought maybe we'd use a phone. Um, I didn't want to use text because I found it so much better with him um, using a, a vo vocalizing the questions. And uh, Leo has got an audio channel and we talk to each other, he can hear me live. And then if he has a question, his voice will come out of my computer um, as if he were more or less in the front row. Wow, that's cool. One of the questions you asked me before was about the um, morale and so forth. And one of the things that's interesting about this class, which, which, which does relate to your question, is that uh, all of my tutors are undergraduate students and a large fraction of them are living on campus. So a lot of them immediately went into lockdown and isolation because their halls were in, in, in isolation. They were in touch with me the whole time and their, their morale amongst themselves was absolutely phenomenal. And so far, I think the morale amongst the students is very good. The other thing to bear in mind is that with a class like mine, um, I don't have the numbers, but I think a majority, I think it's a clear majority of the students in my class are not in Canberra. They're, they're, um, there's, a, there's a good number who are stuck elsewhere in, in Australia, like I was just 
chatting with a student who's in Sydney, for example, and has been there since before the start of the semester because they got locked down um, before the semester started. And then there's a lot of people in other countries. I've got students in Myanmar, they've got students in India, I've got a, a, a student in Kashmir, uh, I've got a student in, um, uh, many students in China. Uh, so, um, so for them, the lockdown didn't really change anything. Uh, it just was a little minor disruption. In fact, we, the, the, the tutors and I were really keen to not compound the pain by inflicting disruption upon those who actually weren't directly impacted anyway. So yeah, we're, we're working through it and I think the students know we're there to help. Uh, they've got really friendly and uh, empathetic tutors, uh, which I think is ascent, which is, I think part of the magic of the course is the, is the amazing team of tutors who, are, who I select very carefully and who have all done the course before and are all currently undergrads. So that really, I, I think, adds a lot to the empathy factor, which, which helps at a time like this.